That's a perfect dough ball right there for making a pizza. I wanted to take this time to show you the actual recipe. This isn't just how to make pizza dough, but this is the actual recipe, the actual ingredients for making New York, New Jersey, uh, thin crust, hand-tossed pizza. So today what I'm gonna take you through is how to make it, and it's pretty easy. Um, and then tomorrow, what I'm gonna do is, because the dough has to set for 24 hours in the fridge, but uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna show you how to make the pizza. So um, let's go over our ingredients. Basically six ingredients. You have the flour, you have the water, salt, sugar, yeast, and a little bit of olive oil. So um, if any of you wanna write down the baker's percentages, and I'm gonna give you guys all the measurements, but um, if, you, if you live by the baker's percentages, uh, the flour is always 100%. The water is going to be 56%, the sugar is going to be 1.5%, salt 2%, yeast 0.75%, and oil 4%. So what I'm going to make for you today, and, and by the way, those percentages work whether you're making a full 50 pound bag of flour like you have here, or just a couple dough balls for the family. So what I'm going to make today is enough to get you two, basically about 16 inch pizzas. Uh, that's usually what is like a standard home oven will will take. So, um, and if you have, I'm sure there'll be questions. This is the first time doing this. Um, we do a catering company in the summertime. We do out, outdoor events, and uh, we have a great time making this pizza. So uh, let's talk about the ingredients real quick, and then I'm going to get to it. Um, the flour here. This is General Mills. Uh, this is what all the most of the um, pizzerias on the East Coast use. General Mills. It's the All Trumps brand, no affiliation with Donald Trump, but that's just what they call this flour. Uh, this flour is, you can get it, but you have to basically get it from a wholesaler. You have to have a business to get this. If you don't have access to this flour, then you could use like a good bread flour. What makes this flour so great is that it is a high gluten flour. So uh, a good bread flour would work as well. Um, for your yeast, you just use, this is, you can get this at any store. This is just called instant, uh, instant active yeast. You don't have to put it in water first. You just, you'll see how we use it here in, in one second. And then uh, sugar and salt, that's pretty easy. But on salt, you should never use iodized salt. Uh, you should either use uh, sea salt or, um, what's the other salt? Uh, kosher salt. So these are the only two you should use with any of your uh, food and your recipes. Iodized just adds a chemical to it and obviously you don't need to add chemicals if, if you uh, at any point. Okay so olive oil just a, a good extra virgin olive oil don't don't skimp there. Uh, it does make a difference and then um, we're going to talk about I've got the uh, tomatoes that I use here for the sauce but we're going to go over that more tomorrow as well as the cheese. But again, this is the tomato sauce that, again, most of those pizzerias use in New York and New Jersey. Uh, Stanislaw is the manufacturer. They're based out of California. Now, in my pizza, um, I can use any tomatoes I want. And, and really, for me, I'm looking for what I feel are the best tasting tomatoes. And I've tried the San Marzano. Um, Cost-wise, they're about the same as this. But for some reason, Stanislaw tomatoes just work out for the flavor that I'm looking for. And then that's also what uh, is used on the East Coast as well. So let's get right into it. Uh, what I'm using here is a KitchenAid mixer. Uh, pretty tremendous. Um, if you have the ability to get one, I would suggest you do. They're probably, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars, two, three hundred dollars. But maybe you can find one, uh, a used one or, or something like that. But um, any other mixer. Uh, might work as well. So first thing we're going to add is the water, and this is going to be three, oh right. Let me let me talk to you about this real quick. When you're measuring your ingredients, do not use measuring cups. You always want to use one of these. This is what the bakers use. It's a scale. They're cheap, ten, fifteen dollars. You can get them pretty much any store that's around you has a, a digital scale. Worth their weight in gold. Uh, it's how you know exactly what you're getting uh, from a standpoint of ingredients and consistency is the key. So given that for this recipe, uh, we start with the water, 
And if you're writing it down, 336 grams. We always deal with grams when we're uh, measuring our ingredients. So it starts water. Water goes in. Next is going to be sugar. Sugar, that's nine grams. And again, it doesn't, it, I don't really believe it, it matters kind of how you put this in here. Um, this is the flour. This is going to be 600 grams of flour. Next is salt, and the salt, 12 grams. Somebody has a question about the mixer. Oh, go ahead. There's a question about the mixer? What's the question? What kind of mixer is it? Uh, this is a KitchenAid uh, mixer. KitchenAid has various sizes. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what size this one is, but um, it does a really great job for the quantity that I'm making. If I wanted to make any more dough than this, uh, this mixer might struggle. When I do our big events, I'll I'll, I use a big commercial mixer where I can get 50 pounds of flour uh, at once in, in that mixer. And that's what most pizzerias use as well. Okay, uh, next is yeast. This is going to be about four and a half grams of yeast. So, so far pretty easy, right? Okay, so now we just put that on our mixer. The only thing I haven't added is the olive oil, and I'll show you why. This is a dough hook. This would come with uh, this KitchenAid or, or any other mix that you have. That's what the dough hook looks like. So this is going to be a little bit noisy, but what you do is you mix this for about a minute. Then you turn off the mixer, and that's when I'm going to add the, ol the olive oil. And you you just want to wait about a minute. That, that gives the flour and the water uh, the ability to, uh, you know, get together. All right, let's say that that's been about a minute. Um, turn off your mixer and then just add your olive oil. And the olive oil is, actually, I actually have it written on here. Uh, 24 grams. Again, grams is what we deal with uh, for this recipe. Again, you're going to get about two 16-ounce dough balls with this. All right, pretty pretty simple so far, right? All right, so back on the and I have it on the lowest speed that it would go. So that on this mixer it's one, it stays on one, and uh, from this point this will go about another nine minutes. Uh, and uh, for lack for, with regard to time, obviously we're not gonna sit here for nine minutes. I'll, once the video's done, I'll finish this one out, but I do have a dough ball that I, I just mixed up uh, right before we went live, so let me, uh, let me grab that for you and you can see what it looks like. So um, once the dough is finished, like I said, it's about nine, 10 minutes. You'll see it, it, it starts to come into a ball. Um, you don't have to worry about adding any water or flour, just stick to um, those measurements that I gave you. And I did forget to mention, the water that I use, and I know there might be a couple of my friends here that are uh, from New Jersey, so shout out to South Jersey, but um, they could probably use their tap water. But for us, the tap water has, um, I guess flavorings in it or it has bleach or whatever they put in our tap water just go with uh, this is just regular drinking water filtered water they can get at the store I think that's like 80 cents that's what I use so in any event um, once the dough finishes in the mixer you turn it out onto uh, a lightly floured surface and then you just cover it with the plastic you just let it rest for a few minutes and, and that's what I've done here so you can see it, it's pretty, it's real easy to work with. Um, at this point, let me get my, where did I put the, my scale? Oh, there it is. So for me, I like to make up about a, um, about a 16 inch pizza. That's what I uh, cook in my oven and when we do our events, uh, that's what I cook in our pizza oven that we have. So a rule of thumb is, well, you might say, well, how much dough do I need for a pizza? What if I only want to make like a 12-inch a pizza? 
the rule of thumb is one ounce of dough, and we're going to measure this, we're going to measure this into dough balls, one ounce of dough per inch pizza. So 12 ounces gets 12 inch dough, 14 ounces, 14 inch, and so on and so forth. So for me, I know that this recipe is going to give, this is um, exactly two pounds and two ounces. So that's going to get me, what I'm going to do is make two pizzas at 16 each, 16 ounces each. So just cut that in half. All right, so that's just slightly over, uh, that's 17 ounces, which is actually perfect because this dough is a little bit over two pounds. So now I've got it broken into my two separate dough balls. Now what we're gonna do is just prepare the dough to store it. And we have to store this dough in the refrigerator for 24 hours. So what we do is we just start rolling it. And if, I don't know if you can see that, I'm just kind of rolling it, rolling it, rolling it in, inside of itself. So what ends up happening is, You'll hear some of the pizza makers talk about closing off the dough. And all I'm doing on the bottom is, I'm just kind of almost creating like a, like a mushroom, I guess, I don't know. But you just close the dough and just tap on it. That way, that's what you have. You have a, that's a perfect dough ball right there for making a pizza. Now, you can never take this dough right now and make a pizza. There's no way that the gluten in this is too, everything is too together, it's too strong. You can never um, stretch this dough out. That's one of the reasons that we put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. It's called fermenting. Um, some pizza makers even ferment their dough for 48 hours. But there's the first one, and let's do it again for the second one. Again, just in it, inside of it, inside of itself. Just keep rolling it. Only takes a couple minutes. You don't have to knead the dough. That's what the machine does. That's why you have it in there for about nine or 10 minutes. And I always just give it a kind of a pat, and there it is. Two dough balls. So now what? So now you just take a couple of Ziplocs. And I like to put, oh, let me just reach that. I like to put just a little bit of flour in there. Just so it doesn't stick. But you'll, you'll see like tomorrow when I actually make the pizzas, it, you don't have that problem. You just put it in there and you don't have to get all the air out, just, just zip, zip lock it closed. Let me do that again. The key is it just has to be in something that's closed. Some people will put it in a container, like for our big events, I'll put the dough in here and then it has like a, um, like a, you know, a lid that goes on it like a Tupperware. And that just protects any air from getting on the on the dough. You don't want that to ever happen while it's fermenting. And then here's the second one. Let me put a little flour in there. Again, just a little bit. There you have it. Two dough balls. And you'll see tomorrow, um, I'll send everybody out a notice as far as what time tomorrow that I'm going to actually stretch this dough out um, and we'll make some pizzas on it. So uh, that about does it. That's how you make the East Coast, South Jersey, which is kind of my hometown, uh, dough. And um, any questions?